70 Sports TV here. Salute to the mighty LDBC, Lions Den Boxer community. For those who don't know, now you know. Smash the like button. Hit the subscribe. Also, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I drop a new video. If you're digging the video, go ahead and share this joint. So, let's break down Canelo Alvarez versus Jamel Charlo. And then we're going to talk about um, David Benavidez versus Demetrius Andrade, which is a fight that is rumored to uh, be in the works right now and almost finalized, okay? Now, first, with Canelo versus uh, Jamel Charlo, this is a fight that I have mixed feelings about. Uh, first of all, um, I'm going to go with Charlo for obvious reasons, but, you know, I'm not really a fan of uh, the Charlo brothers. I think they talk a lot of smack, and uh, whenever somebody stepped to them uh, in live and in person, uh, uh, they back down, you know what I'm saying? We've seen Kayla Plant just slap one of them, uh, Jared Hurst slapped, slapped another one. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of wolf tickets being sold by the Charlo brothers, and they're very disrespectful <clears throat> to fans and everybody else. But, hey, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, I want to see – the reason why I have mixed feelings about this fight is because Canelo Alvarez should be fighting David Benavidez. I don't know how Canelo keeps weaseling his way out of this fight. Uh, this is one of the most anticipated fights in boxing, one of the most fan-demanded fights in boxing is David Benavidez versus Canelo Alvarez. Yet Canelo gets to blatantly say that he's not fighting any Mexicans. I don't know how he can say that and get away with it. It's unbelievable to me, okay? Uh, the fans let this guy off the hook and let him say something like that. Now, this is the same Canelo Alvarez who is holding 168 hostage uh, not fighting the guy who deserves uh, a shot at the belt at 168. He's he bringing somebody up two weight classes. Um, when this fight was first announced, we all thought it was Jamal Charlo, uh, who hasn't fought in, I don't know, since 1987. We all thought it was him moving up to face Canelo. But then we find out it's not Jamal. It's his brother, Jamel Charlo, the undisputed champion at 154 pounds. Um, now, I admire Jamel Charlo's courage to be going up two weight classes while he is the king at 154 to be putting to be risking all of that by going up. It's, it's a it's a something to be admired, something to put respect on. Right. Um, true. Indeed, he getting a payday and all of that. And um, but I want to know if he really think he can beat Canelo because uh, I've been skeptical for a few years with all these young fighters on how they. Uh, uh, look up to Canelo, how they go to all Canelo fights, and they in the crowd just fawning over Canelo. You'll never see Canelo in none of these dudes' fights. Canelo's somewhere playing golf, minding his business. He ain't got time to be putting respect on nobody else's name except for his. But these dudes always at Canelo fights, always trying to get their gloves signed and all that. They fans. So this is why I don't trust them in the ring with Canelo. You see what Caleb Plant did. We all thought Caleb Plant was going to go up in there and really try to do something. And he got up in there trying to have conversations in the middle of the fight with Canelo. How am I doing? Am I pretty good? All that old stuff. See, these, these dudes look up to Canelo. So I'm not sure how Jamel Charlo is going to look versus Canelo. I'm going to ride with him, though. I'm going to ride with him reluctantly. I'm going to hold my nose and ride with him. Now, but this this but you got to put respect on Jamel's name for, for taking the risk going up 14 pounds to face Canelo. All right? And Canelo can't be beat. You know what I'm saying? I think Jamel has the skill set. To beat Canelo, it's about the heart. I got to know what his heart is like, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we're going to find that out when the fight happens, I guess. Uh, but um, Canelo Alvarez, like I said, should be fighting David Benavidez, in my opinion. Now, let's get to David Benavidez versus uh, Demetrius Andrade. This is another fight that has been talked about for a while. Um, a few, maybe about a year ago, this fight was rumored to be happening. And um, Benavidez's team said something to the effect that they wanted a lot of money, like $10 million or something to fight Demetrius Andrade. And that sounds like a duck to me because I'm like, look, first of all, who paying you $10 million to fight Demetrius Andrade? You know what I mean? Come on, bro. Demetrius Andrade really don't – he's not a huge draw. You know what I'm saying? Uh, fans don't really know when he's fighting. You got to be a super hardcore boxing fan and a fan of Demetrius Andrade in, 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 in particular – to even know when he's fighting, you know what I'm saying? 
So how are you gonna get ten? Who gonna pay you ten million? That just sound, that's like duck tactics, practicing yourself out. Uh, stuff that was going on, but it's rumored that the fight's gonna happen. So um, stylistically, you know, Demetrius Andrade can box with the best of them, one of the best pure boxers uh, uh, of this era. You know, what I mean, Southpaw, uh, rangy guy. You know, what I'm saying can mix it up. You know, what I mean, um, but we've seen. Um, a similar style of outboxer, not southpaw, but we've seen the outboxer style in Caleb Plant versus David Benavidez. Now, this is a little scary for Andrade because I don't think Andrade has ever um, dealt with anybody who's going to bring the pressure like Benavidez is going to bring. The relentless Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers type of pressure that, that you know he's going to have to face. And I'm interested to see how Demetrius Andrade uh, deals with this. It's going to be extremely difficult. He's going to have to have, he's going to have to be either slicker than he has been, or he's going to have to have enough pop in his punches to uh, give Benavidez something to think about and keep him up off of him. He got to keep Benavidez up off of him. He cannot get trapped on the ropes. Uh, you know, what I'm saying trying to prove how tough you are or any of that stuff. That that you know that all that mess that um, Timothy Bradley did versus Ruslan Provodnikov. This is not the time for that. Uh, you know, Andrade has to be the, be an intelligent fighter. He has to score now because I don't think they're going to give him a decision over Benavidez um, with just, you know, pot shots and stuff like that. He has to really dominate Benavidez, at least win, I would say. I, I would say to get the decision, he's going to have to win at least eight good rounds. Solid. And it's going to be, it's going to, have to be clear that you won those rounds because – you know, I think they going, you know, Benavidez versus Canelo is still the fight that um, they're holding on to. I think that's the fight PBC wants as well. And they're going to try to entice um, Canelo. You know, I think he got a three-fight deal uh, with the PBC. So they're going to try to entice Canelo with that Benavidez fight. So uh, Andrade, I'm rooting for him. I've been an Andrade fan for years. You know what I'm saying? Um you know, going way back, you know what I'm saying? It seemed like Andre had been fighting for two decades or something, man. It just, it just seemed like he'd been fighting for so long and ain't got no respect and um, having accomplished all the goals he wanted to accomplish. He'd been the champion, but he just, he just you know, the, the respect just ain't never been put on his name, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of this is Andre's fault. He make a lot of bad decisions business-wise. Whoever was in charge of his career kept getting him signed up with these weird uh, weird uh, contracts and weird deals with these obscure networks and uh, management companies and stuff like that. So he's with the PBC now. It took him, you know what I'm saying, years and years and years to get there, but he's there now. So this is where the fighters are, but, you know, now they're throwing them in, with, with, you know what I'm saying, with the wolves right away. You know what I mean? This is not, it's no honeymoon uh, um, for Demetrius Andrade. They're throwing him right in with David Benavidez. And then this is, you know, Andrade has to win this fight, in my opinion. I think he has to. If he can win this fight, then Andrade can really uh, make a case that, you know, Canelo's been ducking him for years. And Canelo has been ducking Andrade for years, regardless of if he win this fight or not. Canelo been ducking him. Let's make that clear. Uh, Canelo don't want to fight him. But if Andrade can beat David Benavidez, um, you know, that's going to that's gonna make a huge statement. Huge statement, man, because this is going to be a difficult fight for him. Benavidez is relentless. He's not going to stop coming. You're going to have to bleed to win this fight. You know what I'm saying? And that's why Canelo keep ducking him because Canelo know this ain't this ain't going to be one of them um, little cutesy fights. You know what I'm saying? If Canelo fight David Benavidez, he's going to have to bleed to win that fight. You know what I mean? That's going to be one of them old school Morales Barrera type fights. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Canelo trying to stay away from it, in my opinion. But y'all let me know what y'all think. Who wins these fights and why? 78 Sports TV. Salute to the mighty LDBC. Smash that like button. Hit the subscribe. I'm up out of here. Deuces.